After you have gone on your texture hunt, let's learn how to create implied texture. So first you need a piece of paper, write your name on it, flip it over, and then you also need a crayon without any paper on it. I have two here because I want to use two colors. And then you also need the items that you collected. So these are some items I found. And as you are looking at your items, feel them and start to think of some words you can use to describe the texture. Some of these might be smooth. That one was a little prickly. This one was hard on the spine, but then soft on the leaves. And so all of them have different textures and they'll create a different implied texture on my paper. So I found all of these outside, but if you are doing this, make sure you have permission from an adult. Don't go around just stealing leaves from someone else's plant. Okay, before we start, here are some texture plates. These can create textures, so if you have them at home, you could use those too. But you could also use other things around your house. Here's a fake feather that I have. This is from some packaging. And here's just some cardboard. So think, before you like recycle or throw something away, you could maybe use some of these for your textures. This is actually from an old yoga mat that I cut. So you can get pretty creative with this project. Either things inside, outside, or a combination of both like I'm going to do. Okay, to begin, grab just one item, put it underneath your paper. I like to think that I'm tucking it into bed, like the paper is its blanket. Feel to find where it is, lay your crayon down. You're gonna pinch it with your fingers, so pinch, and then you have to rub it. So I'm using my other hand, that's my helper hand to hold down my paper. And then with my right hand, I am pinching, so pinch, and rub the crayon on your paper. So if you change the direction, you can actually get more texture down on your paper. So play around with that and change up the direction. And then when you finish, take it out from underneath and just kind of set it to the side, grab a new item, put it under your paper, feel around to find it, set it down, pinch, and my other hand's my helper hand, holding that paper still, and then just rub, rub, rub. I'm going slow and I'm pressing really hard with my crayon, and my helper hand is, is also pressing really hard on the paper to try to keep it as flat as possible. Pick it up, set it to the side, and let's do another one. Okay, now this is way more thick and like bulky than the leaves are, so watch what happens. I'm going to rub, and it's not showing up as well as I thought, and so that's because it's more 3D than flat like the leaves. So that might not work as well, but you know what? It's fun to try. So if it doesn't look how you thought it would, don't get discouraged. Just find a new item and try that. This is all just for practice. If you have another crayon without the paper on it, try putting that down on the paper and you'll see how the colors can layer over each other. It actually creates a pretty cool illusion. So look at my fingers, I'm pinching, pinching, pinching. This is really good for our finger muscles, which make us just stronger artists. So if you need a break, of course, please take a break. And I'm just gonna continue making my implied texture. It's really fun to see how these different items can create textures on our papers. So feel free to play around with this until you create textures that you like. Another idea is you could use the same leaf or item that you used before, but this time use a different color and see how I layered it kind of on top of each other. It just creates a pretty cool effect, so that's one idea that you could do. 
Okay, now I wanna use some of these items. So these are more thin than the bark was, so I think it will create a better implied texture. And yeah, it does. It shows up a lot better, and it was just smoother to do that. Um, this one's a little thicker, so let's see how that works. I really have to use, oop, yep, look at my helper hand. I really have to use that to hold the paper flat, and then I take it out when I'm done. All right, I'm just gonna continue doing implied textures. And there you go, here are some of my beautiful implied textures. I love how they look when you look up close. All right, now you can do other layers to this. We can use different medium or art materials to add some more details or just make this look more interesting. So I'm going to use paint and that's just one way you could do it. I will actually be creating a crayon resist and that is uh, because crayon and watercolor don't really mix. They don't really get along. So the crayon, because it has wax in it and the water from the watercolor stays separate. So watch what happens when I put some paint down over the crayon. Check it out, see how it kind of bubbles up? It doesn't blend in with the crayon. So you can play around with that. You could also, if you have markers, you could add markers to this, colored pencils, really whatever you would like. If you'd like to add some more details or kind of add a background to this, I think it would look really interesting. But of course, since you are the artist and this world is your studio, it is up to you. All right, friends, when you finish this, take a look at your textures. I think it's fun to think of the words that you could use to describe these different textures. And remember, because we can't really feel them on our paper, it just looks like we could feel them. These are called implied textures. Okay, my amazing artist, I hope you have fun creating your implied textures this week. I can't wait to see what you create. As always, if you want to add a picture to Schoology, that would be great so that I could see what you do. All right, have fun.